Well, it's the Crypto Shakes podcast. Uh, I'm your co-host, Anas Bert, and I'm here with my main man, Big D. How you doing, everybody? And we're here with Crystal Bachara today. Is that how you pronounce your name? Yes, Crystal Bachara. 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 Very welcome to the studio. This is the first time we're doing this recording here in-house. Yeah, yeah I'm very special. You are, <laughs> yeah, you're an incredibly special guest. Uh, this is the Crypto Shakes. This is the leading podcast in Dubai and the UAE, where you, regardless of your skill level, will learn everything from cryptocurrencies to blockchain technologies. Um, just a little introduction. Christel Bashara is one of the most renowned NFT artists here in the Middle East. She won the UAE Resident Artist Award in 2018 at the World Art Dubai. And she continues to be an innovator in the NFT art space on Foundation. Uh, we're really, really privileged and excited to have her here with us today. Um, how are you feeling today, Christelle? Oh, I'm feeling great. Thank you for having me. All right. Awesome. Well, Danosh, I think we, we might, let's kick this off. You know, um, I thought maybe it might be a good idea to start with your background, you know, sort of how um, you sort of... Um, how did you kind of get into the art space? You know, a little bit of a, a little bit on you. Yes, so art was always part of my life. Growing up uh, as a child, um, it was a passion. You would always find me drawing, um, asking other people to draw for me, painting, cutting, all this. And definitely, I was experimenting with different mediums and style. When I um, obviously, you don't get to have it a style or a preference when growing up uh, you need to experiment and then at university I wanted to go into fine arts however yeah, I needed a job a career and um, graphic design was kind of new a new field I wanted to I felt it was close to me where, and then I graduated with graphic design worked for a couple of years got a nice experience out of it and then I wanted to go back to traditional art and just create something that is unique for me. And that was around 14 years ago when I moved to Dubai. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. So so what made, made you kind of shift into traditional art? What was your previous experience with traditional art? It was traditional art. It's I like how I, how I express myself, how I paint, how I play with the different mediums of paint from watercolors to acrylics and oils and the different styles and the freehand drawings and all that but after years of experience with the softwares as a graphic designer i fell in love with um, composition and the, the page layout the typography and all that and i was like a very uh, i felt very creative in front of the screen mm -hmm. so what i've done is i put all my experience and using the softwares with my love and passion of drawing and painting into one style. Uh, actually, it was a process that I created and I came up with a new style that I'm passionate about. And I've been working with this style for four years now. And in this style, I can work traditional, like painting on canvas. And I draw digitally. And I used to print them on canvas as well. Very cool. Yes. That's really cool, yeah. And how would you describe your style? Is it, I feel like it's a modern style. Yeah, because what's interesting is you, you combine color, like lots of vibrant colors, red, green, all kinds of things. But then you have a very strong black and white presence as well. So this is this interesting contrast in all of your works. Yeah, so um, my style, I, I would say it's modern. But then I like to add some classic, like I want it to be timeless. Um, so you'd, you'd say it's modern, but then the, um, there are elements like kind of traditional, I would say. So um, the figures that I draw or any composition is very simple, very uh, monotone colors. Obviously, I use black and white and I like a stencils or silhouette style, although they are drawn or painted. And then one part that I would like to highlight or I want to close, let's say, I color it and paint it with all kinds of colors and patterns, small details that I fuse together and then I wrap one part of this painting. It's this contrast that I love. Interesting. Um, I, love I love the contrast. I love how it gives, it is balanced. 
there's nothing stronger than the other part, not the black and white that is stronger than the color. They are balanced, but yet totally different. Yeah. That's cool, yeah. I mean, let's talk a bit about the themes that you've explored with your work, because um, I've seen, without a doubt, you have explored a lot of stuff in the crypto space. So uh, one of your most famous pieces is the, the, the Satoshi piece, which... Um, I think many people are coveting, and I think I saw it on uh, listed for about 35 ETH now. Correct me if I'm wrong. So it's right. quite an incredible piece, and um, I'm very, you know, uh, congratulations on the success of that drop. But I'm curious, how do you come up with your inspiration for what you decide to paint about or what you decide to explore? Yeah, so I take my inspiration from everything around me. One topic that I always come back to is feminism is like the women figures i like to draw women in all uh, in all their um, aspects all their uh, um, per, um what do i say uh, different uh, um, eras eras and uh, different mindsets uh, they are whether they are uh, happy successful even um, sad so i i'd like to um, portray women uh, from their different walks of life it's something maybe because I'm a woman, it's something very close to me. I know I understand very well, so I express easily myself uh, when painting and drawing women. And then, but I like to also, I take objects from, uh, you know, real li like the life around me. And then I try to uh, come up with stories behind them. Uh, there are many series I've been yeah, I've been... For example, I think what I, what I think is quite interesting, and I think many in the audience who listen to our podcast might enjoy this, is that you've explored topics in crypto. Like, for example, oh, yeah. one of your recent works is called Wrecked, R-E, you know, K-T. Yeah, yeah. And I love that piece because it's, it's a ship which is, you know, at Almost sail, right. <laughs> but it's, you know, on... And, and for those who don't know, Wrecked, spelt R-E-K-T, is sort of a term used in the crypto space, in the metaverse to denote someone who's maybe gotten margin called on a massive trade or, you know, they bought crypto at, let's say they bought, um, you know, a, 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 a coin at like one dollar, but then it, you know, they use it, too it, much it, leverage, you it gets rugged up, yeah. <laughs> and you get wrecked. They got wiped out. So, so I've seen you do these kind of pieces where you take a term that's quite big in the crypto space and you kind of visualize it yeah. into your work. Yeah, so the series, the NFT series is a totally different, um, obviously totally different series. And the uh, uh, theme is about the uh, crypto lexicon. So and the um, dialect that and the terminology they use. So there are many words that I would never have <laughs> known before. Uh, in my previous series, like I said, I was talking about feminism, about mystique voices, uh, uh, myth and uh, Greek mythology, but now with NFTs and this series that I wanted to highlight and work on is like these nice terminologies that you wouldn't want like chill or um, I haven't done this one yet. What, what are your favorite terms in crypto? So far is to the moon. Oh yeah. It's, it's so I, I'm related. Because we're all going <laughs> to the moon, right? Yes. We're all we're going to the moon. moon. Or are we already on the moon? Not yet. No. Uh, <laughs> on the way. So yes, these terms are so fun to visualize because um, they are not they don't have the same uh, meaning when you are mm. when you are yeah. using them. But when you visualize them and then in my point, how I see them, they are totally different. Yeah, I know. So yeah. it's so cool. Satoshi is one of it's because it's the first. And I so think, Satoshi, we just have yeah. to explain for the people that don't know, is oh, okay. the, the guy that found it. Uh, supposedly bitcoin so that that was his pseudonym yeah so he, he, yeah. So, no, Nakamoto. No, so no one really actually knows who he is yes if they are a I, I liked how you painted him kind of it's a non-binary figure right yeah he could be a, a girl it or could be, could be a, a guy and that's a ghost or a, it's a little bit like that. the mona lisa no, yeah. yeah i really love that because most people might just assume he's a guy but he very it's it's a pseudonym he could actually be a woman yeah. And you she know, could be a woman. Oh yeah, <laughs> she. <laughs> oh, you never know. You never know. And this is, and I, I represented him like uh, lifting a little bit of his mask, and the mask is kind of transparent, so you can see the, the, uh, the, 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 the face a little bit, and then, uh, yeah, they are kind of Asian. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
because of the, Nakamoto, you, maybe yeah, he's maybe Japanese. Japanese is yeah, right, I say. Yeah. It's, it came from Japan. So, <laughs> so, so now that we're on this topic, let's just go straight into it. So um, NFTs, you know, what, what, are your, what are your feelings? I mean, obviously, you're very successful in this space. But, you know, what is, how, how have you felt, you know, this past year with the boom in NFTs when Beeple sold his piece? Mm -hmm. What are your emotions now and, and like and, and your thoughts on the space sort of generally? Yeah, so it's um, I'm very excited and it, I feel it's like um, it's something very positive that happened finally. Uh, for I've been in the field, let's say six months now. Uh, early this year, somebody just explained the NFTs for me like casually. And then I thought this is a no brainer for me. I create digital art. I have to print them on canvas to sell them and they don't like people think of digital art um, kind of less they don't value it at this on the same scale as the traditional painted one they think it takes less time which means it has to be um a budgeted um priced less well not anymore with not, the NFTs. well finally <laughs> not anymore finally i'm proud to say i i don't have to explain anymore or defend that i do digital but then i also paint and i have to show both of them finally so, yeah we don't have to do that with the nfts and i feel like every day it's been like years i've been creating nfts although it's only six months five six months but um it's moving so fast and uh and i'm learning every day something new and uh, yes I'm, I'm very positive for the future and how we will grow in this space. So do you feel now that the NFTs that you're making are replacing what you were doing before, the traditional art? I think it will um, take over or, or um, I, will, I will keep having both, but finally at least NFTs now are selling for the same value as I sell my originals, mm -hmm. which is uh, very well. So it's complementary. It's, it, yeah, they are complementary and uh, they are appreciated on the same level as my traditional art. Yes. So, so what was the, you know, because you, you've you been an artist for a long time. What was that first thing that got you interested in NFTs? What was it that made you take the leap into the metaverse? Uh, actually, it's um, proving this that this artwork is mine. This digital art uh, is mine. Uh, the provenance and then the proof of ownership and yeah. the, then the, my name as a creator and who's gonna buy it and then the royalty fees after the after it's if it gets sold yeah. on the secondary market this is amazing and then um it, don't, don't mind me stopping you there i yeah. think we should define some terms here for the yes. audience so firstly you mentioned the metaverse we talked about royalties we also talk about proof of ownership and provenance yeah and the provenance. before we go into this let's let me ask you christelle how would you describe the metaverse what is that term to you <laughs> Metaverse. It's, it's, it's like the real world, but it's not real. <laughs> it's somewhere I, I visualize it in, in like, in, not the matrix. But it, it could be of, the matrix. Yeah, it the, could the, be the matrix. In, in the, it's cloud. It's a big cloud. So I, yeah. I, I, think, I think the metaverse Living. can be seen as this digital world where the crypto community gets together, right? So I, he's, he's codings and digital, and I saw it. Cloud with people. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the, meta, the, the metaverse includes, without a doubt, the Twitter space, the Discord, but also increasingly now, I, you could say, um, virtual reality and mm. AR. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean, I would see it a little bit like imagine of, as if the real world is the Earth, yeah, and the metaverse is everything around it, the universe, yeah. where all these crypto-related, you know, companies. Uh, the, the whole VR thing, the AR thing, all, everything that's not real, but is on the blockchain. Correct. Yeah. And, and I, think, I think this is a topic that we kind of did explore before, but the blockchain with NFTs has kind of become a new legal system for the metaverse. It's, right? a, par it's a parallel reality. Yeah. And, and, and the whole point that Christelle was talking about here with the proof of ownership is, so in the real world, how do you prove ownership? You have to take a document in paper and maybe you take it to a court and you say, this is legitimately mine for X reason, right? So let's say a title deed for a piece of land, right? That's physically owned, right? 
Um, and to prove, so if, if someone were to come to your house and say, this is my house, you'd say, well, no. And you could take it to court and say, well, actually, it's my house for this reason. But you can't really do that in, the, in, in this new world, in this metaverse, right? Because you don't have those systems. But instead, we have the blockchain. And the blockchain basically says, so if I buy a piece of Christelle's work, right? The blockchain says I own it and only I can sell it, right? So when she sells that piece to me, she no longer owns that piece anymore. And if somebody wants to contest whether or not, you know, I own it, it's easily provable on, in this case, the Ethereum blockchain, blockchain. right? So that's a really important concept. I think that many people forget. They, they think this blockchain is just this random thing that doesn't really apply. I think people should visualize it as a new legal system for the internet. Take that from the crypto lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, it's, this is why I say it's a smart contract. It's a contract. It's a license of authenticity. And this is how I see it. Um, I am happy also to create NFTs for my physical art because it's painted and it's not digital. But still, it's a, it's a contract, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So. Mm -hmm. so on the point of royalties, how does that work? Um, so maybe you could walk us through it. Like um, if your art sells, what happens? So uh, you set the commission you'd like uh, when you are creating the NFT and then when it's sold, it, you should receive automatically um, a, a sort fees. of a, a fees, right? Yeah. So, so basically what, what, what Christelle is talking about here is imagine she sells her piece to me, right? That first piece. Let's say that wrecked piece, we buy it for 1.9 Ethereum. 2.9. Yeah. 2.9. So the floor pr price on Christelle's work is not, not ex it's, <laughs> it's not, not cheap. cheap. Okay. Yeah, 2.9 Ethereum. What's the price of Ethereum today, Christelle? <laughs> you know? it, it, it's lower than yesterday. <laughs> I've seen my last piece. But it, I, think, I think it's like $3,000. Yeah. So $3,000. Yeah. yeah. So, so her piece, is, her floor price now is close to $10,000 right. effectively. So now what happens is she sells that piece to me. Then let's say I've loved it for a bit, I've enjoyed it, and I actually find a buyer. So Danosh, you come in and you say, actually, I'll buy it for you, uh, from you, because it's a limited edition. Four ETH. For four ETH. So now when that gets sold to you, she, Christelle, is able to still get a slice of that transaction so how much through a royalty. So how much royalty are you getting? Um, the, uh, 12%. So, so it's between yeah. 10 to 15%. Usually, this is the so, yeah. So, so interesting to know as well is that you decide how much worth yeah. you will get. No one else decides it for you, but yeah. you. Yeah. So, what's interesting as well, I think, is how, she, as you said, she decides it. Mm. But in the old world, the traditional art world, right? We didn't really have this kind of mechanism, no. right? So, if you were to sell your work to me, a traditional artist, uh, art collector. And then I then sell it on Christie's for several million dollars. You don't get a slice of that at all. No, Zero. nothing. Zilch. I wouldn't even know if it's where it ends up, who's selling it again. And so, 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 so a lot of people need to understand is the, the NFT revolution actually brings significant innovation mm -hmm. to the art world. Um, and, and, so, and so that's what I really think a lot of people need to, I'm hoping people can understand because this should be an inspiration for more artists exactly. to come into the space. Definitely. So, so for an artist that is new to the NFT space, just want to try it out. What, what kind of recommendations do you have for them? Because you still, you you are one of the OGs in this industry, even though you've been doing this for not that long, but still you're considered as one of Especially the Especially here in the UAE. Yes, yes, yes. So, so I think they need to do their own research, obviously, because um, it's, it's, very complex to talk about this the crypto world and then they need to have a basic understanding they don't need to go technical or to have um, a background in it or engineering or something um it's it's going to be easy to uh, create nfts and mint them and list them on platforms and marketplaces just like we do with our social media but then they need to understand the the terms, uh, the, 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 how, how you buy and how you sell with crypto money, not the regular money and all that. So these terms and this, they need to have a minimum understanding of this technology. So, uh, yeah, so, so someone that's new to this and wants to price their art, or for example, when you price your art, yes. how do you price it? 
So, you know, I started with experimenting, especially because with foundation, it's an auction base. So you wouldn't want to start, you want to start, I used to start low, like uh, around 0.1 Ethereum, which is around 400. It depends mm -hmm. the market, how, what, how. And then I used to get a lot of bids and they used to build up to one or three Ethereum. I was very happy with that. But then two, two of my art was sold for 0 0.4 Ethereum. And I was kind of, no, this is a unique edition. This is one artwork. It has to be equivalent of one of my uh, original paintings, right? So I started um, increasing the price to a minimum that I'm happy with so that whatever uh, there's more bids on it, I'm even... It's more even better for me, but then I, I would be um, settling the uh, the reserve price for uh, the minimum that I want. That you're happy with. That yeah. I'm happy yeah. with. Yeah, this is. Would you say a lot of your marketing happens on social media? So yes, my marketing. I don't have a marketing team. Obviously, I don't do campaigns and all that. It's just it grows. I'm, I've been growing for four years organically. I have a team now of, I have a PR manager, I have a copywriter, I have a manager who helps with the business side of my work. But the marketing is more from social media, Instagram, Twitter, now Twitter. But yes, Instagram is like uh, my uh, uh, marketing tool. So looking back at your, you know, your, your, your history in, in the NFT space, what would you say is the number one biggest mistake that you've done? In the NFT, I'm still, you know, it's kind of new, but yet not that new because uh, it feels, um, I've been doing this for years. You know, the understanding of this technology, it's, it's keep on changing in my mind, in my head. You know, I started with, okay, now I can create digital art. There's uh one uh, uh, there's a proof that this is my work right because i've seen my work copied in yeah. in malls i've seen them on amazon and then but i'm not gonna these are copies right they, they are on my clients whoever wants mm. to buy a, a cheap print I, not cheap let's say but yeah it's it's a pixelated print they are not my uh clients they are not um art lovers they don't appreciate my work um but uh but if you could have done one thing differently what would that have, what would that have been no i wouldn't i wouldn't have uh, i think I'm christelle doing, has been doing amazing I'm, drops you know the thing is i i am I'm, I'm sticking to my own how i believe uh, yeah. my art experience have been for through the years and i'm i'm just worked on a one series which mm -hmm. is beauty in defy i'm listing it Every week I list one on foundation. Uh, I'm happy to create uh, commissioned pieces with NFTs that I sell and I send the NFTs through OpenSea. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm now I'm experimenting maybe with uh, launching new series on different marketplaces. Oh, nice. Brilliant. Uh, yes, um, I'm on non-urgent uh, and maybe on maybe local marketplace soon. So this is what, what I'm, I'm thinking of. At the moment, yeah. I just wanted to, for the benefit of the audience, yeah. also talk about Foundation. Mm -hmm. um, so Foundation is the primary place where I think some of your finest pieces are listed. Yeah. Um, and why, 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 why did you choose Foundation? So, um, you know, I the first artwork I listed on OpenSea. Oh, okay. Because I had my account there. And then on the same day, from a good friend of mine. Uh, Mr. Pashamo. Pashamo. He sent me an invitation to Foundation. He's like, you can still, they are still on OpenSea, but then Foundation is, it's by invitation, yeah. it's definitely more curated. So I went and delisted Satoshi the second day. Actually, on the second day, whenever I opened my account on Foundation, I listed another artwork. It sold within hours. Wonderful. So I delisted Satoshi and placed it directly on and listed it again on foundation and it's where it's sold and ever since i've been listing that i have now 21 artworks 19 of them are sold yeah. just, just for the benefit of the audience as well so yeah. i actually have a piece <laughs> by pashamo right here um because danosh and i are both nft connect collectors as well uh, pashamo is a wonderful guy he's based yeah. in turkey um and what's interesting about this point though is that on foundation it's actually an invite only platform isn't it so yes. you have to Anyone who wants to sort of be there has to kind of get an invitation first, 
Yes. Um, and so that kind of builds a bit of an exclusivity kind of vibe with Foundation. I think that's what makes Foundation a bit different from OpenSea and some mm. of the other platforms. Yeah. It's more curated. It's more kind of fine art focused. And so I think it's quite, it's perfect for yes. the kind of work that you are trying to put out. Yes, for this series, especially, which is a unique edition, unique uh, artwork, it, it has to be part of a marketplace that is selling like only fine art or artworks you know not collectibles yeah, and yeah. all the rest of uh, well, what's also interesting about foundation is that when people buy a piece from you a lot of these collectors they kind of want to show it off right and so every person on foundation has a profile exactly. and you can see the works they've created but also the works they've collected the and so some of these big big fish you know they, you often they have like an avatar that you don't know who they really are but then you look go into their collector they have like you know, 10,000 works and it's like, oh, wow, this guy's a major OG. And you look at all the works of how much they cost. It's like 100 ETH, 20 ETH, 50 <laughs> ETH. You're like, okay, okay, my friend. You know, yes. and, 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 and it's quite interesting how Foundation has created this in the metaverse, this kind of, uh, I, I, and this is what I want to talk about this in, in, in the next point, but how NFTs are becoming a sign of social status. It's uh, a way to sort of show in the metaverse your place in crypto as we see, we're increasingly seeing this crypto elite beginning mm -hmm. to form. Um, and what, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think that NFTs are increasingly becoming some kind of status symbol, yes. like, a, like, like a Rolex watch? Yes, definitely. Definitely. It's a social status and all that. Um, definitely. It's like collecting uh, art before and then placing it at your home or if it's too expensive i don't know in a vault somewhere but then <laughs> uh yes definitely this is where we're heading to the metaverse to the virtual world where you can show off what you have collected through yeah so that, that leads me to a question uh going back to a discussion we had where you told us that you know your kid today doesn't ask you for products or gifts in the in the, in in the, the physical, real world in the physical world he wants NFTs. He wants skins. Yeah, yeah. Roblox. The Roblox is you know, like it's this metaverse, and then uh, with a lot of games in it, and then they have this coin which is a Roblox, and then we need to buy these coin these coins so that he can spend it on uh, the pets and the skins, and then some. And he knows what's more expensive, and that if he's wearing this outfit, then the rest of the group or the people playing the other kids they would follow him and then yes it's a it's a whole uh... so so many times when we think about the nft market we, we, we're comparing it with from our own own point of view we think that okay, mm. you know why would we buy so much stuff in the nft space but there's this whole generation of young kids growing up and they're going to be the future buyers of nft 100 exactly. generation z is going to come they, so like a wave. They so how, are native, the so, natives, right? So how do you think that's going to change the NFT space in the future? Oh, my God. They are, they are, I think everything is going to move. We're going to have like uh, two worlds. And then whatever we do here, we can also do uh, in the metaverse. And then uh, it's so wide and so creative and uh, to experiment in the, a new whole dimension i don't know what they call it yeah <laughs> yeah cool um what are your thoughts now turning on another subject within the nft space on avatars or profile pics i know this is something maybe kind of different from the, the more fine works that you that you do but mm. um this is kind of linked to sort of what your kid sort of yep. is buying you know he's yeah. buying these skins what what are your thoughts on the whole profile pic nft craze right yeah. now it's very interesting, actually. Um, I didn't have now. I have some time to actually uh, understand and like grab this whole uh, project thing with the avatars and then the collectibles. Or and I re I totally understand it. Um, I want to get some actually. What, I need what, to what, what do you have your eye on? I love the the um, uh, the apes. <laughs> the... <laughs> Everybody loves the apes. So yes, just for the benefit and... of everyone. We've talked about this on one of our previous episodes because me and Danosh, we tried to buy one, but we failed 
we, we horribly. Did, we, we didn't fail. We chickened out. We chickened out. Yeah. So because the, our board ape was snatched, and then two seconds later, they were selling at five ETH more expensive. Yeah. So, so the board ape yacht club is one of the most famous NFT drops. It, it dropped earlier this year. They're now currently being sold on Christie's for, I think, minimum one hundred to hundred to two hundred ETH a pop. So they're one of the most successful projects in the space. It completely mm. changed. So you actually want to buy one? I would love to. <laughs> <laughs> but then the numbers are not very you, you, encouraging. You, you, you know, when we, when we were looking at it, it was selling for 25 ETH. Don't tell me that again, please. <laughs> I have a photo on my phone where I sometimes look back at the price and sort of think, yeah. And then, and then you slap yourself in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so and now the market is not, not saturated, but there's plenty of these projects and then you need proper research to know which which and what kind of experience you're looking at or the utility that you're going to get from buying into a project like that. Um, it's very interesting. And from my business side, because I'm an artist and a business uh, a woman, let's say, but uh, I want to take part of this as well, not only collecting, I want to be creating a project like that and um well it's on yeah i'm planning and studying uh what uh, i can do in this field and yes oh we, we look forward to seeing yeah. your profile pic on twitter become changing. to changing to some <laughs> avatar you know yeah. because uh oh I'm curious to see what project you end up in definitely we would be collectors for sure yeah. oh 100 percent 100 percent um i want to just kind of circle back now to some of the drops that you did because I think it'd be beneficial to the artist to understand how you do a good drop. So what, what would you say would be one of your most, um, just before I said that, so a drop is when you um, mint a piece of work and you kind of list it for the public to finally kind of buy. And yeah, so just, I mean, just to explain minting as well, it, it basically means putting the NFT on the blockchain. Yeah. And the drop is launching. Launching it, yeah. So it's kind of like, you know, I. Nike dropping a new pair of shoes on the market. That's the kind of idea, right? Mm. And to, to do to do a drop, you actually have to spend gas yeah. on Ethereum, which I know is a bit of a barrier of, to entry at the moment, but yeah. it's an important part to ensuring the security of the Ethereum blockchain, etc. How how would you explain, or maybe you could talk us through one of your most exciting drops and what that was like? So. Um... For for me, I don't I don't create like a lot of hives and all that. I just um, mention on my social media that I'm gonna be dropping today or tomorrow a new artwork on Foundation, and then whenever I do, I just promote it regularly on my social media. And then in April, the drops were like whenever I drop one artwork, I used to get a lot of sales and I a lot of bits. Sorry. <laughs> And then one of the drops is um, to the moon. This artwork, it was really nice because I had a kind of a, a war on it mm -hmm. uh, with two prominent uh, collectors. A bidding here war. A bidding war, yes. Those are uh, always exciting. Yes, they I've are participated super in a nice. couple of them. Yeah, I they love them. Exciting. I, I, exciting. I'll be honest yeah. with you, sometimes I search for yeah. bids and yeah. I just enter. <laughs> Just to get into a fight because it's just so exciting. <laughs> well, you actually met one of our, our close friends through yeah, a bidding war. Exactly, yeah. I did. One of our closest friends it was a collector who I actually lost a bid to, but I actually ended up like con contacting him because he he lives in Dubai. But yeah, I think bidding wars are so much fun. It was super nice, super fun, and I was like getting tweets from accounts that I that they were watching the bids, you know, and they were. I don't know if they were doing bids between each other. Who's gonna win? Or you know, so it was. It was a, a that was a nice uh, <laughs> drop. Cool. So one more question is: If you had a bit of Ethereum in your Ethereum wallet right now, who would you be? Which artist would you like to buy your next drop from? So the artists I'm looking at, they are not NFT artists. They are traditional artists and not only traditional, like multi uh, diamond, uh, multi visual artists, I don't know, uh, disciplinary artists. But then I, ha I have one artist is James, uh, James Jean, and I love his work. 
he's not doing a lot of drops, but I keep my eye on him whenever, if there's anything How new. much are, are his works going for? Around uh, uh, 300. No. Yes. 300 ETH. Yes. No, yes. I don't. Really? Yeah, I'm gonna look. Uh, just what, make what's sure his name? James I'm not Jean. Good with yes. James Jean. Okay, yeah. we'll look him up. That's yeah. incredible. Yeah, he's yeah, not well, an NFT artist. We'll so cut his name out from the podcast so yeah. we don't hype him up. <laughs> yes. <no. laughs> so, so just to wrap this up, what we like to do, um, just to kind of also give uh, more color to our guests, is just to ask at the very end some rapid fire random questions about okay. you. <laughs> so, first question: uh, Do you have a hidden talent outside of art? I'm a bad cook. It's bad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't cook. That's a hidden secret. <laughs> <laughs> You're a bad cook. Okay. But but do you not have a talent? I mean, that's 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 a non-talent. Yeah. Like, do you are you secretly like a really good swimmer or? I like singing. Oh, you oh, like singing? Wow. You, know, you know, you know, I play the guitar. Yeah, like, so I'll be singing. You know, we, we could we could start a band together. You know? Yeah. Um, actually, Danosh here is a rapper, so we oh. could we could legit start a little thing here. You yes. could do the yo 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 and the yo yo yo. The shakes in the house with Crystal Guitar. <laughs> um, if you had time to not work, like not do your art, what would you be doing? I'm just. Uh, I love traveling. Yeah, exploring new cities. Any yeah. favorite destination? Um, Italy is always, uh, there's many cities that I haven't been in Italy and it's always so pretty. I love it. <laughs> um, who is your favorite actor or actress? I like Jennifer Lawrence. Because she's, she's quite... She's new. Uh, uh, yeah, she's not uh, like uh, uh, kind of new, but yes, yeah, she's, uh, I, I love her. She's very natural and she's, Whatever she does, I, I like her. And then um, Leonardo DiCaprio, <laughs> obviously. Standard. Yeah. Do you have a poster on him on your wall? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, final question, and it's more Dubai specific. Um, what's your favorite restaurant in Dubai? My favorite restaurant it keeps changing, but then uh, all time favorite, uh, La Petite Maison. Oh, okay. Yeah. LPM in LPM. DMC. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's a really nice restaurant, yeah. I yeah. must say. Well, I mean, that concludes our session. Look, Christelle, it's been such a pleasure to have you here with us, uh, especially in our home studio. The first time. First yes. time. Thank you so uh, much. We love this discussion. Uh, we can't wait to do another session with you later on in the future. We can't wait to see where your work continues to go. And um, yeah. So for all the people listening in, would you like to share your social medias with them? Crystal Pshara and Atelier Crystal is the Twitter. Yeah. Awesome. Wonderful. And for you guys who are not following or subscribing to this channel, make sure you do because we're going to keep pumping out a lot of new content over the next few months. Yeah. So just stay tuned and see you next time. Yep. Crypto Shakes in the house. <laughs>